56.4% of the NFL identifies as black or African American. 24.9% are white. 10.5% two or more races. 5.7% are not disclosed. Hate to break it to you guys, but one good look at you and I think I can figure it out. 1.5% are Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. 0.4% are Hispanic. 0.2% are other. And coming in at a whopping 0.1% are Asians. Now, why is the NFL so racist towards Asians? I don't know. It's not my jurisdiction. But what is my jurisdiction is bringing a Super Bowl to Africa. Head coach Amari Mohammed of the Chicago Bears, and he is gearing up this franchise to relocate to Zimbabwe. We'll be resetting the entire NFL, drafting our team from scratch, relocating to Zimbabwe, picking a new mascot, rebuilding our stadium, and of course, this video can't end until Africa has a Super Bowl. Now, as we head into this fantasy draft, there are some questions to be asked. Number one, obviously, we want black or African-American players on this team, but there is a distinction there. For example, a guy that has to be on this team is Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but I'm not actually African. But I do know that Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa has the sickest cultural African drip ever. This guy has to be on this team. And then there's guys like Patrick Mahomes, who is technically mixed, but I just don't think he really fits in with this team. There's no real parameters for this, but we're gonna get as much melanin as possible. Our pick is round one, pick 26. Not very good for getting a quarterback, to be honest. There shouldn't be too many good players available. I mean, I actually don't hate Jordan Love. He's normal dev, though. We definitely can pick him up later. Is it too early to pick up CJ Stroud? Low-key would be sick to have him on this team. I, I do think this is too early, but I'm going CJ Stroud anyway. He's 97 in true value. We take him as our very first pick. He will be representing Africa. My next pickup is going to be Quinnen Williams. He's 25, a superstar D-tackle, 94 overall. He's so good. Yeah, 28 in true value. We get him at 30. I love having a good D tackle. I'm going to pick up Derwin James at strong safety. Run support out of Florida State, 27 years old. Dude, the lighting makes everybody look like they have gray hair. I think it's so funny. Really nice pick right there. Here's another guy. Now, this is a reach, but David Njoku is a guy that has to be on the Africa rebuild. So, David Njoku has been nicknamed Chief since he was a middle school student because people thought he resembled his father, Innocent Njoku Sr., who has long held a chieftaincy title. On March 16th, Njoku was formally named a chief. Oh, I got to draft him. Yeah, it's a total reach, but he's got to be on this team. He is, by the way, he is an 89 overall star dev, so he's going to be superstar next season if we get him the reps that we need to get him. So David Njoku on offense, Jeremiah Owusu-Karamoa on defense. I think we have two perfect representatives of the Africa rebuild. I need to pick up Karamoa next because he's, dude, Karamoa is actually so good. I'm scared he might already be gone. Shit. I can't believe I missed him. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Thank God. It's actually a pretty good spot to draft him. So Owusu Koromoa is 23 years old, star dev 85. He's insanely good, actually, as a middle linebacker. May end up moving him to middle linebacker, just getting him crazy reps. And my goal is to have him and Njoku at Superstar X Factor, 99 overalls. Might be harder with Njoku, who's going to regress soon, but got to have him on the squad. Next, I'm picking up George Pickens. I just want a really good young wide receiver. It's a minor reach, but I want him on the squad. Dude, look who is still available. Bijan Robinson is still available. Absolutely, I'm taking him. I almost tried to get Saquon earlier, but somebody snatched him up. So, hey, it's a blessing in disguise. Jaden Reed is another personal favorite of mine. I'm going to add him to the squad. So, we got George Pickens, Jaden Reed as our wide receivers. Bijan at halfback. We're a young squad. And we have CJ Stroud. Oh, my God. We are so young. Hey, we need some, like, veteran leadership or something. Just kidding. I'm taking the GOAT, Andre Sisko. This is probably way too early to grab him. Oh, no, it's not. Andre Sisko's a franchise demon. Don't sleep on Andre Sisko. My Super Bowl MVP in my user league, actually. All right, I'm gonna let the CPU take over. Hopefully, I don't get too many white boys. We'll find out. Now for the big question, the relocation. We need a new mascot, a new team, a new everything. Also, I can't believe I just figured this out, but there's no relocation cities? Why did I think Zimbabwe was a place you could relocate to? Dude, wait a minute. You have Dublin, Ireland, London, England, Paris, France, Tokyo, Japan and Melbourne, Australia, but you don't have a single city in Africa? How do you how do you skip an entire continent? I've got Canton, Ohio. Nobody even knows what that is. Nobody wants to be there. Show me one happy, non-depressed person in Canton, Ohio. I will show you a relocation to Zimbabwe. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? We have Rio de Okay. All right, boys. We're all gonna use our big imaginations here, okay? 
We're gonna relocate to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and nobody tell the feds, but we're gonna pretend this is Zimbabwe. As far as anyone's concerned, that's Zimbabwe. Now, I did have a dilemma here with our relocation mascot, I'm not gonna lie. I thought the tigers would represent Africa really well until I Googled it. There are no tigers in Africa. There's none. It's, it's a myth, apparently. Other than like really uncommon sightings, there's no tigers in Africa, so that's not it. I do have a great option, though, the antlers. The most common animal in Africa is an antelope. So we charge headfirst into the opposition as the antlers. The move is the antlers. Let's go, baby. Now it gets... Wait, 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 wait. Let me actually look up. Also, I have been misquoting this entire time. Zimbabwe is not a city. Zimbabwe is a country. My bad. That's on me. We're definitely going with the basic sphere stadium. It is hotter than hell in Zimbabwe. So we're going to need the dome to, to keep the sun out. We are going to be pumping the AC. They call it San Juan, Puerto Rico, the forest. We all know that this is Harare, Zimbabwe, the antlers. I will be referring to our squad as the Zimbabwe antlers. All right, let's take a look at this lineup before we head into year one. CJ Stroud and Bijan Robinson in the backfield with George Pickens and Jaden Reed. This is actually an absolutely insane core of young players. Offensive line is dog shit. Straight up. Matt Hennessy? Matt Hennessy may be white, but they definitely picked the right guy for the Africa squad. Jurgens, not so much. Brown, not so much. And Joku's gonna be a stud. Our offensive line needs help. Definitely gonna target them in the draft. And then defensively, Oromoa, we ended up getting Kendricks, uh, Quinnen Williams, John Franklin Myers, Lawrence Armstrong. We got Tyreek Stevenson. Love him. And we got Kyler Gordon. I really like Kyler Gordon too. So these are some good, uh, some good corner pickups. Cisco, James, why did we get Mike Edwards? We've already got Derwin. It was a weird pickup. Um, okay, the biggest problem I'm seeing right now is how are we going to generate pressure on the quarterback? Obviously, Quinn and Williams, but Koromoa is a pass coverage guy. I think we keep everyone where they are right now, but we should try and draft or trade for somebody who's going to get to the quarterback, and then we can move Koromoa to middle linebacker. So we just need a, like a really strong left end, something like that. This might, be a, this might be a tough season for us, but as long as all the right guys are getting reps, Stevenson will get reps here. Koromoa is sub linebacker. Okay, all right, all right. Definitely need to change my team schemes, though. Chicago's sucks. We'll run Chicago defense in the base 4-3. We'll just see how that goes. It is an 89% scheme fit. But offensively, we can't run Chicago's offense. It's so bad. I am actually going to rock KC because KC prioritizes their uh, tight end so much. So KC will spread the ball. It's all our wide receivers. Bijan isn't going to do as much as we'd like, but David and Joku is going to hit the ball a lot. And that's what we love. It is a power run West Coast scheme. So West Coast power run, not a good scheme fit for this squad. Not going to lie. I guess we'll find out how this works. Dude, it's gonna be... Dude, it's... Oh my god, it is hot in Zimbabwe. Holy shit. Tennessee... The Tennessee Titans are flying to Zimbabwe for this game. You gotta love that. Season one was mediocre. We go eight and nine. But honestly, my team is so young. Going eight and nine is pretty cool. Definitely improved a lot. And our salary cap. Look at that. 58 mil. Granted, all at once, when all these young guys want to get paid, it's gonna get a little bit scary. But the Zimbabwe squad, I'm proud of. CJ Stroud ends fourth in the league, 32 and 10 as a 100% offensive rookie of the year. 100% offensive rookie of the year. If Bijan didn't get it, who got 1,007 and 12? Uh, and Njoku, damn, my lead receiver, the number one guy for us is David Njoku, 1250 and 8. Rashid Shahid came in second. He's also really young. And then Jaden Reed, 861 and 9 touchdowns. George Pickens, 700. And four Bijan four six seven two. Damn, Rashid Shahid coming in second, but Njoku amazing season. Definitely looking like a dev trade upgrade for David Njoku. Kendrick with a ton of tackles. Wusu Karamoa in the same boat. Wow, Eric Kendricks was so involved. Three sacks, three interceptions. Damn, he's a little too involved. He's like he's not gonna get any. Kind of sad, you know. I don't want him getting too many reps. Leonard Floyd got home ten times. That's impressive. Quinn and Williams, eight. Franklin Myers, four. Kendricks, three. So here's the thing. Damn. What did I tell you about Andre Sisco? Andre Sisco with five interceptions. And three for Tyreek Stevenson, who is a rookie. Could Tyreek Stevenson maybe have gotten defensive rookie of the year? Probably not, right? Hold up. Let's take a look at the offensive rookie of the year. It's not CJ Stroud. It's Jordan Addison on the Rams. Bijan nor CJ got it. That's insane. Defensive rookie of the year, Tyreek Stevenson came in fourth. Wow, I really thought we'd get something there. It was a great season. We don't come up with anything big. My concern is a lot of the guys that are getting great stats are guys that aren't going to develop too well on this team. Guys that I'm not thinking about too much. So, so I got to make a big move here in the draft. There is no free agency in year one of a fantasy draft other than like kickers and punters since everybody literally just signed their players. So we'll skip off season for year one. All right. 
Let's take a look at this draft class. Look at Deshaun Bingham of New Mexico. He only slid 128 spots. Yikes. Sorry, Bingham. What we're looking for is like a left or right end, honestly. And I will be drafting in the 15-ish range. All right, head into this draft. I have two targets. I also have two... I have back-to-back -back picks. Oh, shit, because we were the Bears. Hey, we have a ton of good picks here. I want pick 14 and pick 15. Okay, I want O-line and I want edge rusher. Now, there's actually a stud that I've been looking at who's, who's technically projected 30th out of who's available. But this guy looks like a freak. Steven Waddle. Number one, he's already a top fit for our team. Great speed, great strength, great acceleration. He's got A play rec. He's got A to C block shedding. Gonna stick around for a long time. We just have to hope that he's hidden dev. This is gonna be my first pick. Steven Waddle, 84 speed for a speed rusher of his size. 6'5", 290. It's actually really good. 87 excel, 87 strength, hidden dev. Exactly what we're looking for. That's a great pickup right there. Now I want the best soul lineman available. Welcome to Zimbabwe, Steven Waddle. You know the joke when they said, you are now a Shanghai shark? Well, now you are a Zimbabwe antler. Daniel McDonald. I have to imagine he's hidden dev because he has elite speed, elite excel, great, great, good. The only thing is his strength is decent and strength is pretty damn important for offensive linemen. So Daniel McDonald's a good option, but then there's also Josh Galloway. He's got elite strength, good speed, great acceleration, but poor jumping. It's honest. It is honestly a toss up here. I kind of like elite strength better though. I just got to hope that he's hidden dab. I'm going Josh Galloway. Blue, blue, blue. 70 speed, 92 strength, 81 excel. A six foot seven tackle, Josh Galloway. I don't know for a fact that he's going to be a tackle. I might move him to guard or center, depending on what our team needs, but amazing pick. Now we're round two pick 15. Low key, I, I straight up might take an offensive lineman again, if available. Here's Jose Foster out of Clemson. Clemson. He has shot up the boards. I see elite. Great, great. Oh my God. He's a fucking stud. Gotta be hidden dev, right? Sometimes it's too easy. Jose Foster, 90 strength, 81 excel. We've got an elite edge rusher and two hidden dev offensive linemen. This is an excellent first draft here. At round three, pick 15. I really don't like anything here. I'm just gonna take Theo Collins because he shot up the draft board. It's a normal dev wide receiver with 91 speed. Nothing special there. Could have traded that away. Not sure how much I would have gotten out of it, but this is gonna be my last pick anyway. Let's throw a Hail Mary here. Here's an Oregon State corner, Julius Lott. With great speed, great excel. It's a good start. I'm actually going to take Tim Nickerson. Quite the last name, buddy. You're trying to get me in trouble. But ah, he honestly looked like he could have been a hidden dev tight end. I wanted a backup for Njoku. He's okay. Tim Nickerson. There's a lot of sets that use two tight ends. I like to have two tight ends. Uh, but I'm going to end this one off. Let the CPU take over. Draft A. I saw three hidden devs. This was a great draft for us. Draft recap, baby. What do we got? Come on. Oof. Dude, those first three picks were so good that I fell off a cliff. But still, Waddle's a 75. Galloway's a 74. Foster's a 73. That is such a good draft. Keep in mind, my draft class strength is on normal. So that is, that is a really, really good draft for us. Let's see what this class looks like. The best player in the class was an 80 over all free safety Jamal Allen, Corey Lyons, Dalton Jackson, Glenn Casey, Keith Parker. Looks like we did make the right offensive line call. Doesn't look like there's any better offensive linemen or I mean a few, but round one pick 25. Yeah, no, we did a great job here. All right, let's go in the depth chart now. Make sure all our rookies are getting the time they need. I am going to make Nickerson the backup to Njoku, even though he's only a 68 overall. My new left tackle is going to be Ja. No, where should I put him? Foster is my new starting left guard. I'm going to let Aaron Brewer stay at center. My new right guard is actually going to be Josh Galloway. He's a 76 overall at guard. All right, here is your roster for season two. Keep in mind, I tried to pay George Pickens a super max. He did not want to be in Zimbabwe. So now our wide receiver one is Jaden Reed, and then wide receiver two is Rashid Shahid. But we don't have anybody behind there. The CPU did draft uh, Donovan Peoples, or maybe that's not his first name, Damian Peoples who is a hidden dev rookie out of Oklahoma. But I don't know. I think we're eventually going to need a new wide receiver one. But Bijan and Stroud look insane. And Joku's got superstar. Uh, the new offensive line has some developing hidden dev guys on there, but still, honestly, could use some work. That might be a free agency problem. And then defensively, here's the new look. So Cisco got superstar. Derwin James regressed to superstar. Still got Gordon Hilton and Tyreek Stevenson. Waddle is our right end. Franklin Myers left end. Quinn Williams in the middle. Kara Moet, middle linebacker, and my outside linebackers are Taki Taki, Eric Kendricks. I don't know. There's there's honestly a lot of things that this team needs. Let's just try and have another good season here in year two. See what the Zimbabwe Antlers can do. Honestly, very shocked. Pleasantly surprised, really. We go 10 and 7. 
I didn't think this team had it quite yet. I felt like there was too many holes, but hey, congratulations to the Zimbabwe Antlers. This is our first playoff run. Uh, we wouldn't see any dev trait upgrades right now, but we can see morale, and it looks like the squad is very happy with how they performed so far. Stroud throws for 4,000, which was eighth in the NFL, but a 29-5 and TD interception is great. Bijan, another solid season, but he's not doing as much as I'd hope. I think he is being held back by my very uh, weak offensive line right now. Njoku, another 1,000-yard season with 11 touchdowns. Everybody else is very mid. Theo Collins had 8, 13, and 6, I guess, but I got to get Jane Reed more involved. This is a big mistake by me. Kendrick's another big season. Karamoa, another big season. Look at the sacks, though. This is huge. Quinton Williams, 11 and a half. Dorrance Armstrong, 11. Chauncey Golston, 6. And our rookie didn't get any, but I did just realize that I actually had... Dude, this is such a bummer. I always run with reorder depth chart manual. I accidentally had an auto, so the computer automatically subbed out Steven Waddle, which sucks. So he, he doesn't have a great rookie season, but that's okay. I'll get it fixed for next season. Regardless, we went 10 and 7, which is amazing. So CPU knew better than me. If we can make it through this game against the Vikings, I'm going to pop in and play with our squad in the divisional. Maybe play some moments. Lose to the Vikings here. No worries. We have a lot of cap space, though. 100 mil in cap. I'm going to see if there's anybody available in free agency. All right. Who is available in free agency? I've got 100 mil and I want to spend it. Yeah, see what I mean? It's just Justin Tucker, a bunch of kickers. It's always kind of random. Elijah Moore is low-key a nice pickup, though. 25, interested in the squad. He's an 82 overall. He wants a big deal, though. I'm going to give him a team-friendly deal here. Save us some money. See if he bites. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. He does not bite. Nothing for us in free agency. We'll just hang on to our cash and be ready to pay our studs when the time comes. So we've got round one pick 20. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I almost want to go offensive line again. We have so many so many positions handled. Kind of like this D-tackle, Keyshawn Archer. Great strength, great speed, great... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shot here. Because we've already got Quinn and Williams. We're gonna have a crazy one-two punch. And he is hidden dev. 90 strength, 84 excel, 74 speed. Keyshawn Archer. Round two, pick 20. I'd like to grab an offensive lineman if available, but they obviously got to be good. Darren Lacey out of Virginia. No, he's normal dev for sure. That guy is a bum. Well, Frank Goodwin out of Michigan. He has a pretty good chance to be hitting dev. He has three greats. I'm going to take the shot. Dude, I'm killing it right now. I'm honestly killing it right now. Frank Goodwin, 77 XL, 83 strength, hidden dev, offensive lineman. I keep, I, I'm, I'm grinding on this O line until we get it where we want it. Our next second round pick, pick 27. You know wide receiver, bro. I'm gonna let the CPU take over for the rest. I believe in my CPU. Draft recap. So Keyshawn Archer was a 71. Probably not the best first round pick. Goodwin's a 72. And Gavin O'Connor from the CPU, a 73 overall. He's normal dev though. Damn. Highest overall was normal dev. Take a look around the entire league. See what everybody else was drafting. An 81 corner is the best in the class. 78, 78, 78. And 77. It's not too strong of a class. There were some better tackles, though, like Miles Baxter. Here's a 77. Could have had him. Sidney Kerr here. Yeah. Nothing crazy. All right. The depth chart won't get messed with anymore. So here is the lineup for year three. David Njoku, Superstar X Factor, exactly what we wanted. Still working on our own line. Jaden Reed, he's going to have a big season this season at slot wide receiver. Stroud and Bijan, both 91s and superstars. Quinnen's an X-Factor. Derwin's an X-Factor. Stevenson is superstar. Good for him. Cisco's superstar. is going to stay up in a linebacker. Keyshawn Archer should get some good reps. And then Waddle's my rush right end. I got to get him up to a superstar. We're going to need that. And eventually we'll need some outside linebackers too. But should be another good season. And my reps, my reps are where they're supposed to be. So I'm hoping we can make another playoff push. Except this time Jaden Reed should have. I'm hoping Jaden Reed has 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. That's my prediction for Jaden Reed. Okay, I asked for a playoff push. I got it, but it's not a pretty one. Nine and eight. Luckily, the NFC North is weak, so we end at the top of the NFC North, and we get home field advantage. It's kind of crazy when you go nine and eight. All right, CJ Stroud, 26 and seven, 4,000 yards. He's not getting over that hump of being like top 10, but he's not getting into top five, and I kind of want him to get into top five. Bijan goes for 1,118, his most touchdowns, and Reed, okay. I said 1,415. He goes for 1,209. Still an amazing season. And Joku, 1,109. So he he keeps killing it. I'm so happy for him. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa has his best season. 131 tackles, 6 TFLs, 2 sacks. Taki Taki has a good season as well. And in the sack department, oh my god, what? Our backup D-tackle, Keyshawn Archer, the rookie, 
Our first round pick has 12 sacks? Completely outdoes 99 overall Quinton Williams. Who's the starting D-tackle and the rush D-tackle? How? Waddle got home five times, but bro, 12? That has to be defensive rookie of the year. There is no way he didn't get defensive rookie of the year with that. All right, look at the NFC defensive rookie of the year. It's Keyshawn Archer. That's so cool. I'm, I'm so shocked, but I'm so happy. That is so awesome. All right, let's see if we make it through this wild card here. And I'll step in for the divisional if we can make it through. Another L. So we made it to the playoffs twice as Zimbabwe, but two losses, both in the wild card. Next season, we're going to be horrifying. We're going to be very scary. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look for offensive linemen in free agency, and we're going to look to trade our first-round draft pick for an elite wide receiver. We'll have Jaden Reed and somebody who's amazing. Then we'll also have Njoku, Stroud, Bijan, and I think the defense is good to go, especially with Keyshawn Archer, Quinnen Williams, Steven Waddle, Cora Moa, Derwin James, Andre Sisco. We're good. Cowboys beat the Browns in the Super Bowl. Okay. All right. Free agency, please. I just want I just want a stud offensive lineman. Not sure I'd count Trent Brown as a stud offensive lineman. Not too many good options, but I will say Andrew Van Ginkle would be a nice addition to this team. Ah, no, but he's more of a speed rusher. We don't need that. Maybe Shaq Thompson. I think if we're going to make a serious playoff push this season, here's what we do. We're going to sign Trent Brown to a player-friendly two-year deal. Slightly boost the offensive line. We're also going to sign, if he'll sign with us, Shaq Thompson. Shaq Thompson would be really nice where our rookie currently is. Thompson would be nice because Kendricks continues to regress. He's an 81 overall. I like Thompson. So we're just picking up those two guys for the Super Bowl run. Let's see if they take their offers. They both do. Trent Brown and Shaq Thompson. Two solid additions. And then we're trading away this draft pick and maybe something else so that we can get our hands on an elite wide receiver. Not gonna lie, I kind of want CeeDee Lamb. Ooh, DK Metcalf would be sick though too. 28? Yeah, we kind of have to make the push right now. I actually kind of like DK Metcalf because he should be easier to acquire than CeeDee Lamb since he's a 95 overall and he's 28 years old. I mean, none of these guys are easy to acquire, but let's just try him for a first round. What's it gonna do for us? About halfway. All right, let's throw in a second and a third. And we throw in Rashid Shahid, who's a young wide receiver with some value. Honestly, we are almost there. I want to keep Jaden Reed, though. DK Metcalf is an expensive man, but Rashid Shahid and Theo Collins are young wide receivers. A first, two seconds, and a third round pick for one of the best wide receivers in the league, DK Metcalf, 95 overall. He's got three years left on his deal. Superstar X Factor. He's 28. It's a big, that's a big move right there. I'm going to sim the draft since we only have 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th round picks. We'll check the recap and we'll move into this next season looking to make a very serious playoff push. Hopefully a Super Bowl. We made big free agent signings. We traded for a star wide receiver. Everything else should fall in place. That's the hope. CPU got me a bunch of homeless people. You know how it is. All right, let's check out the entire league. Was this a strong class? 280s in Jeremy Clements and Braxton Silverman. Not a very strong class. On normal draft classes, you really don't see many players over 80 overall, though. Is this the season we go all the way to the bowl? We're an 88 overall. CJ and Bijan in the backfield. We got Metcalf now with 87 overall. Jaden Reed and 93 X-Factor David Njoku. We've got Trent Brown, Foster, Galloway, Brown, and Bruce. So the offensive line is a lot better than where we started. We're probably about an 80 overall average on that offensive line. Really happy that we were able to move the needle there. Then defensively, Waddle does not get a dev trade upgrade, unfortunately. But I'm glad we picked up Shaq Thompson. He's a lot better right there. Cisco is developing really well. Stevenson, Kyler Gordon, and ew, Evans. Okay, our third corner could definitely use some work. But Keyshawn Archer gets star dev. 80 overall. He had such a good season. Hope he keeps it up. And Derwin's almost a 97 overall. Another 9 and 8 season. Wow, we are just like, we're riding the middle of the pack. We take on the Vikings again who have beat us before. Can we get through this game? Please. Please. Let's go deeper than the wild cards, Zimbabwe. 28-7 we lose. Dude, we really can't go deeper than this. Hey, CJ Stroud though, third in the NFL in passing yards. So there's a big season for him. 36 and 3. Bijan 1311. Jaden Reed 1040 and 11. And Joku 980 and 7. DK Metcalf 916 and 4. I mean, he's not slot wide receiver, I guess. Maybe maybe it's all just got to do with slot wide receiver, man. Maybe I got to have DK as slot wide receiver. But he is wide receiver 1. Kara Moa in an absolutely insane season. 154 tackles, disgusting. Three TFLs, four sacks, two interceptions, and a forced fumble. Dude, Keyshawn Archer's a god. What is up with this defense? The backup D tackle in Cowboys 4-3 goes insane. Dude got 14 sacks. 
Nine and a half for Quinn and Williams, six for Waddle. Dude, that's crazy. That really is crazy. Four interceptions for Kyler Gordon. All right, we're getting stuck being mediocre. We got to have an awesome season next season. We do have the draft to look forward to here too. And we still got a lot of cap space. All right, round one, pick 20. We have been, huh, we've been a wild card team for the last three years. I honestly don't think anybody that we draft here is going to significantly move the needle on this team. I'm trading this pick away. I'm going to develop some capital. And I don't know, maybe I leverage all this capital into something else. But this is a late first round pick. So what can we realistically get out of this? A 2027 20, first, second, third, and fourth from the Cleveland Browns. I'm taking that. I'm taking this offer from the Cleveland Browns here. First, second, third, and fourth. That is a lot of capital. Um, and I'm going to trade away my round one pick 32 as well. Honestly. See if we can get out of this. I'm going to get a first, a third, and a seventh from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we've turned our two first round picks into just so many picks that we can hopefully use in the future. And my goal is to use those just to make a big move as far as a trade. But I guess we're going to have to find out. Holy shit. I was so shocked by these numbers. The CPU went off. Johnny Bruce left guard out of UCLA. Hidden dev rookie. In the third round, they got a 75 overall left outside linebacker who's a run stopper. This is literally perfect for my team. He's not hidden dev despite the overall, but what a stud. They even grabbed a 93 speed halfback. Bijan's eventual replacement, maybe? What a great draft for them despite trading away two first round picks. That worked out so well for us. Best player in the class in 82 center. Then there's a pretty steep drop off to 78. Bunch of 77s. Wow. Oh, look at this, man. So DK actually went down to superstar because he didn't get enough involvement last season. I'm going to make him slot wide receiver. But CJ is a 99 X factor now. And Joku's still X factor. Dude, dev trait regression is killing this team, though. Tyreek lost a dev trait. Derwin James lost a dev trait. Before the season starts, let's make a big trade. We got 57 mil in cap. We could, we could add a monster to this team. Question is who? I think I want a really good corner. Who could we get our hands on? We got a lot of draft picks to work with. Spoon? Look at Devin Witherspoon. He's a 96 overall. Two years left. He's on the Buccaneers. They could honestly use this. They have like no cap space. He's going to cost a lot though. So we've got extra first rounders, extra second, extra thirds. Two first rounders this year. Two second rounders this year. Dude, is Devin Witherspoon really worth three firsts? I don't think this is worth it. Now that is more like it. Christian Gonzalez, who's actually younger, just a lower overall, for two firsts and a second round pick. He's a 91 overall. He is superstar, and he's headed to the Antlers. We trade away our draft pick so that we can make a move like that. Let's see if it pays off. The 2027-2028 season. We added Christian Gonzalez. We've developed our defense so well. Our overalls are crazy. We're a 92 overall team. My, my concern is if we don't, make a push this year things are going to start to get really difficult especially with Njoku regressing pretty quickly Quinton Williams is going to start regressing Derwin is already regressing let's try and make this push right now boys for Africa for Zimbabwe holy shit I wanted to see how we were doing at mid-season <laughs> we're fucking dominating we have 50 mil in cap we're in 92 overall we're a six and one this is our best season yet we might have built a fucking dynasty in Zimbabwe we just got to win the bowl bro we're such a sick team but we can't get past the damn wild card actually wait a minute if I get a buy here I don't have to play the wild card so I'm guaranteed to get past it Let's find out. Holy shit. Holy shit. And we went off. 15 and 2. Was Gonzo really the move? Look at that. Look at the antlers thing right there. At antlers, Christian Gonzalez is lightning in a bottle. Eight tackles and a pass deflection last game. All right, let's uh, take a look at how we did on the season. Stroud's 4,546 and 2. It's got to be an MVP season, right? It's got to be. Bijan had his best season, 1,517 touchdowns. DK Metcalf, holy shit. 1,322 receiving touchdowns. In Joku had 10. Dude, we went off this season. Poromoa had our most tackles. We always love to see that. He had five fucking interceptions. Oh my God. Dude, they're putting on for Africa, baby. Come on. 10 out of Keyshawn Archer, 9 out of Williams, 5.5 out of Steven Waddle. Dude, this is an awesome season. We have to win the bowl right now. We are playing out of our minds. Let me see if Stroud won MVP. He did. CJ Stroud wins NFL MVP. Offensive player of the year goes to DK Metcalf. Defensive player of the year in fourth is Owusu Karamoa. We shouldn't have any rookies of the years, although we had somebody in there. 
Jerome Flowers got eighth. We didn't get best running back. It went to Kenneth Walker. It was almost Bijan, though. Best wide receiver was DK. Dude, what an honor. All right, boys. So we actually, our wild card curse can't affect us because we don't have a wild card game. So we go straight to the divisional. Taking on the Washington Commanders, who are nine and eight. It's always fun with a fantasy draft because that is not the Commanders we know. And obviously, we're also like five years in the future now. So let's see what the Commanders got. They got Micah Parsons, Jamel Dean, Justin Fields, Kenny Clark, Dalton Kincaid, Jimmy Newman, an outside linebacker superstar, Amari Cooper, Joe Tooney, Jordan Battle, Joey Hayward, Christian Benford, Christian Watson. It's an interesting team, but I feel like we have a significant advantage here. He has 199. We're ahead. Why don't you, why don't we take a look at our roster? Actually, let's look at the Antlers roster from this perspective. We have 499s, CJ Stroud, Quinn and Williams, Bijan, and DK. Keep in mind, we drafted these first three, CJ, Quinn, and Williams, Bijan, DK Metcalf, we traded for, Derwin, we drafted, Koromoa, we drafted, Cisco. I'm telling you guys, this guy's a franchise legend. And obviously, we just traded for Gonzo. Amazing season. Oh my God, let's go. All right, I want to get in a few reps. We built this squad. I'm going to play a few plays. I'm going to do a couple drives on offense and defense. I don't want to fully impact the game. Uh, and then we'll let the Sim take over. And hopefully, the boys can take us all the way to the bowl. We're hosting in Zimbabwe. The Washington Commanders flew all the way to Harare, Zimbabwe, to take on CJ Stroud and the Antlers. Come on, Justin Fields. Big first quarter drive. Let's take the lead. Here we go. First and 15. I tell you what, I kind of see someone pretty close up on DK. DK is... No. Dude, DK Metcalf one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I take those odds every day of the week, but we didn't have time to get the pass off. Honestly, I wonder if this is the same coverage. Like, could we just do that again? Not so much this time, and holy shit, these edge rushers. Micah Parsons completely ignored any block we attempted there. Alrighty, third and 21. Not looking good right now. I'm just gonna check this down to Bijan, and we missed the throw. Fourth and 21. Holy shit, that commander's D-line is insane. We just turned the ball over. That was crazy. Dude, the all-madden CPU is no joke. All right, third and six. I do get to take over on a defensive snap, though. We got Shaq Thompson and Owusu Koromoa. Cannot believe that Koromoa never got a dev trade upgrade. He has consistently been one of the most, like the best linebackers in the league. Steven Waddle gets a sack. Excited for that. It's just weird that he's still starred out. Zero to zero here. I'm coming back in on defense. Second and four. They need me for a stop. I'm going on Andre Cisco in case this is a stretch run. Kind of feel it coming. It is a run. It's not a stretch, but Andre Sisko's all over it. Cleaned up by Koromoa. Come on, Zimbabwe. We can't falter right here, dude. Are we just like playoff choke artists? Are we just this crazy good team that cannot close playoff games? Are we the Dallas Cowboys in real life? Third and three. Slip screen. Slip screen. I'm all over it. Great defense. Fourth and three. We hold them to a field goal. Wait, why did it just say they're going for it? It said they're going for it on fourth down, but this is a kick. Is this a fake? Oh my god, this CPU just ran a fake? I don't think I've ever in my life seen the Sim CPU run a fake. Well, wow. Wow, they kind of just helped me out a lot right there by telling me that. Dude, our offense just keeps turning the ball over, though, because here I am playing defense again. First and ten. I'm gonna guess pass here and try and get home real quick. Nobody's getting home right now. Checks this down. Huge hit. Out of Derwin James, second and five. I'm dropping everyone in coverage. It's definitely a pass right here. Just gonna try and cover everything. What a throw, what a catch. Kind of expect the run here, so I'm gonna play for it. No. Damn, I blitzed that spot right there too. They throw a touchdown right on it. Dalton Kincaid gets in. Can I have an offensive drive, please? Oh my God, and I'm back on defense again. What is my offense doing? I haven't even touched the ball. Touched the ball once at the start. Third and seven, laser from Justin Fields. First and goal. First and goal. Can we stuff whatever this is? It's a handoff up the middle. We can stuff it. Second and goal. Elijah Mitchell's going nowhere. Okay, we know this is a pass. We know it's a pass. Oh, shit. It's not a pass. But we've got it bottled anyway. We are stuffing the run. Absolutely a pass. Going on Shaq Thompson. We got a lot to cover here. Somebody get Justin Fields. Let's go. No fumble, but it's fourth and goal. That's got to be a field goal. There is absolutely no way they're faking it again. There is absolutely... Dude, what is with this team? I think they're faking it again. Oh my God, they're fucking psychos. They're actually psychos. It's picked off by Cisco. What did I tell you about Andre Cisco? That's going to be a pick six. What are they doing? They have fake two... I've never seen the computer in my life do this. Oh my God. I'm literally perpetually playing defense. Could I try out my offense, please? I said I was going to impact the whole game, but I'm invested now. It's seven to seven, third and six. I'm on defense. 
Good stop. Fourth and six. I assume we get the ball back here. Unless they're going to bring out the field goal unit and fake it again. Dude, how the fuck did we insta turn the ball over? I actually don't get it. That was fourth and six. And now immediately they're back in the red zone. What are we just fumbling every time we touch the ball? Andre Cisco, huge tackle. Dude, what is going on with my offense? We have such a good offense. What are we doing? They just keep running the ball. Need to make a big hit. First and 10, boys. I'm going to hit Bijan out the backfield, make an insane juke. I like this. Looks like it might be man coverage on Njoku. I know he can beat that. And he does. He does. No, he doesn't. Dude, what is this defense? We've completed three passes in Sim. Kind of looking for Metcalf, maybe Damian Peoples. Damian Peoples is there. I need him to catch it, though. Huge. First and 10, CJ Stroud unloads. Caught! End zone! End zone! DK Metcalf! Or is that Njoku? That's Njoku. David Njoku gets in the end zone. Are we going for two? No, we're going to kick it. We're going into overtime if we can stop them. 10 plays, 75 yards. Hey, they got it in. Good work, Antlers. Second and three. They just need field goal range. And our, and our Super Bowl hopes are gone. Come on, get home. Get home on fields. Nice pass breakup. Third and three. Third and three. It's play action. He's almost sacked. And he's almost intercepted. What are we doing? Fourth and three. We're going to get the ball back, though. Just got to get in field goal range, and we have two timeouts to do it. Holy shit. We can win the game right here. That is... It's an okay punt. CJ. Dude, CJ, just do it, buddy. Do it right here, right now. We have the ball at the 46. Oh, my God. We could actually win the game right now. If, if Stroud connects right here. No, you're going to run out of time, dumbass. Why are we going Hail Mary? You just need a field goal to win it. DPI. It's that DPI. We will be in field goal range if that's defensive pass interference. Oh my God. Oh my God. The greatest bailout of all time. We're going to the NFC Championship. Holy shit, did that just happen? That is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. That whole game was fucking large. Dude, CJ Stroud completed four passes when I took over in the fourth. That's insane. What are we doing? Look who it is. It's our rivals, the Vikings, in the NFC Championship. I feel like we play the Vikings all the time. And they beat us every single time. We were 0-3 against them in the playoffs. They got Fred Warner, Kenneth Walker, DJ Moore. Let's ball out. Okay, I have to be significantly less involved on this game, to be honest. It's 14-0. Now 14-7. Now 21-7, 21-10. Can we hang on? 21-13, 28-13. 34-20. Let's look in at the final minute of this game, but this is absolutely a W for the Antlers. And we're going to head to the Super Bowl. Let's go, baby. Rifles it low. Good tackle. But that clock is still moving. They're going no huddle, not using their timeouts. They need the touchdown and the onside kick to even have a chance here. Let's just not even let them get the touchdown, right? Swatted away. All right, third and 10. Jordan Love's flushed out, and he's sacked by Waddle. Fourth and 19 is the final play of the game right here. Final play of the game. What's Jordan Love got? He's basically in Hail Mary here. Oh, hey, intercepted by Derwin James. Fourth and 19. What a massive play. Derwin James just ended this. Let's go. We're going to the Super Bowl, baby. Jordan Love, big interception to end the game in the playoffs in the NFC Championship. That's ball game. Let's take a look at the stats. Clearly, we picked it up in the offense department. Ooh, Tim Green came in and threw a, threw a touchdown. Did we fake a fucking field goal? Did we fake a field goal? What is with the fake field goals? Bijan, 11-103 in a touchdown. Insane game for him. And Joku, 10 for 137 in a touchdown. Yeesh. And Joku, you dog. All right, boys. Let's go to the bowl. Our Super Bowl was against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a weird team to play against in the Super Bowl, I'll be honest. They're a 91 overall with Lamar Jackson, Tyler Smith, Javante Williams. This should be a fun one. And just like that, boys, Zimbabwe has finally made their first Super Bowl. We've been to the playoffs, but we kept choking, kept choking until finally this 15-2 and two season where we're meeting off with Lamar Jackson on the Pittsburgh Steelers with Javante Williams. We've got Obviously, an absolute squad. This game is hosted in Raymond James Stadium. Gotta be, it's gotta be good weather in Tampa Bay. We'll be starting with the football. All right, this is the Super Bowl, so I don't want to have an input here, but we will start with a touchdown. Pittsburgh turns it over. Low scoring so far. Pittsburgh gets their first points at 7-3. to three. Now 7-10. to 10. I gotta check in. We're in the red zone. It's third and goal, but we're back to far. I don't know. Are we gonna be able to get in a field goal, or do we go for it all? Go for it all, Stroud. For it all! Cut! Njoku! He caught it on the one. No way we kick this field goal. I'll be so mad. Yeah! Give it to Bijan and punch it in. Give it to Bijan and punch it in. No! Yes! 
Yes! Zimbabwe Antlers and Damian Peoples! Our slept on young wide receiver, often overshadowed by Metcalf, Jaden Reed, and Njoku, but he just made a monster catch in the Super Bowl. Oh, that gave me that gave me a heart attack. Look at this. Easily could have been batted away, but Damian Peoples. Ooh, right in the hip pocket. Honestly, a sack would be best case scenario here. To keep that clock running. Oh, ask and you shall receive. Second and 16. That was huge. Can Waddle get home? Go, Steven Waddle. Laser from Lamar. Intercepted. Who's got it? Who's got that ball? Let me see it. Tyreek Stevenson. Oh, what a play from Tyreek. He's been up and down at one point, was a superstar. Regressed to star, but he just made a massive play in the Super Bowl. Dude, the Super Bowl has been all about players that we don't usually talk about. Tyreek Stevenson, Damian Peoples, Stroud and Bijan, I'm sure, having a great game, but... There's Bijan on the fake jet sweep. He's gonna go. This game is over. 11 point lead. We're in shoe clock mode. Another handoff to Bijan. Another three yards. It's not technically over, but if we get a first down, no. Third and two, we're just going into victory formation to try and hang on to the ball, I guess. And then we're gonna punt this with about 20 seconds left in the game. Fourth and two, great coverage right there from Derwin James. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. First and 10. Let's see the desperation Hail Mary here out of Steelers. Always makes me feel good about myself. Lamar stepping up in the pocket. Lamar B can't help himself. Running perfectly horizontally. It was a full-blown robot right there. Final play of the game. Come on, give somebody an interception. No, it's not the final play of the game. I take it back. He has one more airmail ball to throw. Oh my God, give him a sack. End it with a sack, Steven Waddle. Don't help his ass up. Let's go. Amari Muhammad, the Zimbabwe Antlers. Take home their first ever Super Bowl. Let's go. Dude, we built a god squad. This is a serious dynasty that we built here. Granted, I did draft a lot of crazy young players that were gonna develop, but we made some huge trades too. Christian Gonzalez, DK Metcalf, and we drafted some amazing players. The D-Tackle, we got Steven Waddle. Damian Peoples ended up having such a big impact in that whole offensive line. I can guarantee you that CJ Stroud is Super Bowl MVP though. 258 yards and three touchdowns. Bijan, 13 for 71 and receiving. And Joku, the chief, 104 yards and two touchdowns. Damian Peoples had another touchdown. And honestly, DK Metcalf, very quiet. Three for 27. Maybe we never needed to trade for him. Same with Jane Reed. Five for 53 is pretty good. But. Defensively, Koromoa had nine total tackles. Dude, you couldn't write a better script. Waddle got home. John Franklin Myers got home. And the one interception from Tyreek Stevenson. That's our Super Bowl, boys. Let's go. All right, let's see that recap, baby. Super Bowl MVP of the Antlers is CJ Stroud. A 21 to 10 win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Amari Muhammad gets coach of the year. We get MVP and we get offense player of the year hell of a season let's take a look at the league history the Niners beat the Ravens in 2023 I wish that that's what it looked like in real life in 24 the Vikings beat the Titans 25 the Cowboys beat the Browns 26 the Browns got their get back 28 to 17 against the Commanders I want to show you guys our Super Bowl winning lineup a 93 overall Antlers team with four X factors on offense Stroud Robinson Metcalf and Joku and a really high overall offensive line really proud of how these guys develop Reed got up to a 94 overall and and defensively, Koromoa, dude, he's a 98 overall, and he's still star. That's crazy. Cisco, Christian Gonzo got X-Factor. 99 Williams, 90 Waddle, 85 Archer, 90 Stevenson, and then Derwin James, obviously amazing as well. Now, once I win a Super Bowl, I like to put the next season on autopilot just to see, like, what kind of position have we really put this team in? Could they maybe pull off a back-to-back? -back? Yo, look at this Super Bowl. It's Jets versus Cardinals. So we went 11-6. and six. Clearly, we built a good squad, but uh, who did we lose to? We lost to the Saints in the divisional round, who lost to the Cardinals, and then it's the seven seed Cardinals versus the four seed Jets in the Super Bowl. Uh, place your bets on who wins this. My, my money's on the Jets. Oh, shit. The Cardinals win 41 to 35. That's a hell of a Super Bowl, honestly. Who got MVP? It was Mac Jones. Get the fuck out of here. I don't want to hear it, bro. Looks like the team is hung on, though. We didn't really lose anybody in free agency. Looks like we were able to re sign most of our players, and Cisco, Williams, and Archer all got dev trade upgrades. But Derwin James regressed like crazy. All right. Hey, we put we put Zimbabwe in good hands. All right, boys. Hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. And after bringing Africa Super Bowl, nobody can say I'm racist. So that's a plus. All right, boys. I love you. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.